always stay moving, I don't wait round. Coming for the bar, that's a takedown. There ain't really nothing left to say now. And we got them on their heels, throw the fade now. Yeah, watch your eyes step. Cause you ain't really wanna like that. Oh, you ain't know I was running like that. I get the ball, I'ma run it right back. I get the ball, I'ma run it right back. I get the ball, I'ma run it right back. Front, it's Dre Davis and a handoff to a day Wusu. Guarded by Spencer, trying to start down the lane. Now it goes to the right side. He attacks and lays it up, missed it. Rebounded by Betty Ako and a foul on Klingon. And Klingon goes down and he's hurting. It's like he landed on his ankle awkwardly. Donovan trying to stand up straight, but he is certainly favoring that right ankle. But the Pirates are going to revel in this one. Yukon comes in. And they fall for the second time this year. The 17 turnovers, a season high, and the inability to stop penetration, both in the half court and the full court set. Something we've seen happen a few times this year for UConn. It really came up big in this game for Seton Hall tonight. I think we, we, uh, we felt good about how we were playing, um, but in the Big East opener at a place that uh, you know, caused a lot of heartache for the program last year, just felt like there was uh, you know, maybe an, an emotional edge. Uh, a mental edge that that Seton Hall had over us in that game, um, and I just we did not have the the intensity, the energy level to win a Big East game. He went down and went out. We knew we would be out for some time, so you know, next man up. And I thought Samson Johnson did did a great job, um, you know fulfilling Donovan's role and just doing a lot of the things that he does well on the court. Welcome to the XL Center. It's time for UConn basketball and tonight the fifth ranked Huskies will host St. John's Red Storm in their second Big East game of the season. Donovan Klingon, he's going to be out for about four weeks, five games with a strained tendon in his right foot. How the Huskies play without Klingon will maybe determine how their season goes here over the next four weeks. The game for St. John's, it was a must-win game for us. We had the break coming up for Christmas, and you know, coming off a loss, every game is must-win. So really, we went in there with the ultimate mentality of doing whatever it takes to win. And the crowd was amazing for us. XL Center was hyped. It was energetic. It was a great atmosphere to play in there, and it was just an unbelievable game. Just to grind out a game against a really, really good team it was something special, and it really just reminded us of how good we are. Spencer, he's guarded by Soriano outside the arc. Spencer drives to the basket, lays it up and missed it, but it's stuffed home by Samson Johnson. Fires down on a castle, they go alley-oop to the Johnson, and he stuffed it home. It was tough, you know, obviously we lost our best defensive player at that point, but I thought it gave us an opportunity to regroup, and, uh, you know, Samson, I think, really grew in the time that Donovan was out. Uh, we were able to play a couple different lineups. You know, Alex Caravan played a lot of the center position, which was really hard for teams to guard. And uh, guys stepped up across the board. Back and a rebound. Newton got it. And on an outlet, it's Castle. Castle out of the field. Guys inside. Out the bucket. And he's fouled. Spencer now to the paint. He had Singari. He gets it to him. He lays it in. Great pass. Kicks it back outside of ball. Launches a three and hits. He's going to pull up. He does fire a three. No good. And that's it. UConn wins it. The final 69 to 65. Nothing was easy about it. It took everything for UConn to win it. And they are now 11 and 2. St. John's will drop to 8 and 4. Let's go, coach. <laughs> And listen, a lot of that travel caught up to us. You know, that travel and that stretch of scheduling caught up to us on Wednesday night, right, of this past week. And, uh, and we had a championship response, yes. right? We had a championship response to what happened on, uh, on Wednesday night. So unbelievable job. We've earned these three days off. Then we get 10 days till we play again to really get our shit together and put ourselves in position uh, to get what we want in this regular season. Yes, sir. Let's go, y'all. Everything on three. One, two, three. Everything. It's a new year, but in Stores, Connecticut, expectations remain the same. Tonight, the reigning national champions are back in action after a 10-day layoff. 
as UConn jumps back into conference play, welcoming in the DePaul Blue Demons. Starting off the year on, on the right foot, you know what I mean, with, with a big win against DePaul, we look very sharp. You know what I mean? We look like we've been preparing the right way. Um, our offense and defense has picked up. And then we just, I feel like that, that built some momentum for us. Here's Hassan into the paint. He gives to Castle who dunks. Oh, alley -oop. Castle kicks it right to Ball. Ball steps into a three. Got it. Caravan double team. Caravan lays it in. That'll be it. UConn goes to 12 and 2. They won 23 of 24 here. And number four will be protected as number four in the country after this one for the Huskies. Welcome back to Hinkle Fieldhouse, where Butler leads at halftime, 42 to 35. UConn turned the ball over way too much, nine times, and uh, Butler was able to capitalize on that. That's why they lead. Every Big East game is going to be a battle, but especially on the road, you know, places like Butler and Xavier, they're they're tough places to win. You know, I thought we uh, we got off to a little bit of a slow start in the Butler game, but. We really finished strong and uh, showed a lot of will and heart in that second half. Johnson puts it on the floor, looks to hand it off. Now he gives it up to Diaro, starts to his right guard about Moore. Down to 10, Diaro trying to go into the paint. Now he throws up a three, it's in and out. Rebounded by Spencer, and he calls a timeout before he fell out of bounds. How big was that? You see Cam with the competitiveness, especially during the Butler game when he got the offensive rebound, called a timeout. And then, you know, right after the timeout, he comes in and makes the dagger shot against Butler to complete the comeback. So, really, when you see those moments, you know how badly he wants to win. And then you just see it throughout all the other games, too. He's just sinking shots. You see him yelling to the fans. You see him just giving energy. So, really, he just leaves it all out there on the court. Over to olivari has got the R on him. They dump it down low to Usman. He's got Caravan trying to guard him, and the ball is intercepted. Here comes Newton on a run out. Newton into the paint. He lays it up left handed and in a one man show. Castle front court left. Back door cut. Spencer is open and he banks it in. What a great assist from Castle. Down low to who's not working on Caravan. Throws his elbows up and Caravan call for the foul. I'll tell you what, that's rough stuff down there. Usman not afraid to throw elbows and he almost caught Caravan. He did. He cut his forehead. And no, no foul call on that one. Uh, Alex going out, uh, I didn't know the severity of it. I looked for him for quite some time, and uh, there were a lot of panic calls from the staff uh, wondering where the medical team was with Alex because he disappeared for a little bit too long of a period of time. But uh, he, he uh, you know, it was like a Rocky performance, man. It was like, uh, you know, they cut him. He had the little trickle of blood, um, you know, coming down his eye, and then... Um, the plays he made down the stretch uh, to come back um, and play through pain and and play through adversity and uh, yeah, but that's a that's a national champion out there. And UConn has done it, 80 to 75. They get the win over Xavier. On front court right, Newt drives it, goes by Epps, into the paint, gets whacked and put it in! <laughs> they got Caravan with a little mismatch down low if they get it to him, and they do. Caravan gets it to the cutting Castle, and Castle flushes it! We obviously built that game up, and um, we, we understood that we would be number one that Monday if we won that game, and I think part of our, um, you know, part of our mindset here is that we're always going to be a little bit underrated or a lot underrated. You know, January almost buried us last year. I mean, January made a run, um, you know, at really kicking our ass last year and putting us in a bad spot. And, um, you know, I think our mindset as, as January's got later here is that we've got a chance to, uh, or at least I do, to, to repay January. Now UConn, as the number four team up to this point, wins it 80 to 67 over Ed Cooley at the Georgetown Hoyas. 26 for Caravan, 20 for Spencer, 14 for Castle. Well, you can call it eye candy, but it's likely UConn will be number one when the poll comes out tomorrow. And the last time they were number one was in February of 2009. They brought the number five at the final poll. 
That team also got to the Final Four in Detroit. Welcome to Campbell Pavilion in Stores, Connecticut. UConn number one in the country hosting Creighton number 18. Number one for the first time since March 2009. The game against Creighton was super important for us just to defend that new number one ranking. And, you know, it's a top 25 team coming into our building. So, you know, it was super important for us to come out there with energy and, you know, put on a show for the fans. Here's Diara, front court right to Spencer. Backdoor cut to Diara. He laid it in. And Count Brenner fouled him. Go to the line, Hassan, and try to make it a three-point play. Newton starts to his left, gets another screen from Klingon. Into the paint, he's in traffic. Gives it up, down low to Klingon, who makes the catch. Big fella power, and he lays it in left-handed. You know, Donovan, uh, it was amazing what he was able to give us. We didn't make a decision on him uh, until probably 2.30, 3 o'clock on game day. So he truly was a, a, uh, a game time decision. Yeah, it was the best individual defensive performance of the season. When Donovan was playing in the lineup, you know, in advance of the Seton Hall game, we were ranked as a top 15 defense in the country. Uh, by the time he returned for the Creighton game, we'd fallen all the way to 45. Uh, but we knew going into the Creighton game that Creighton's one of the very best offenses in the country, one of the best teams in the country, um, and that we were going to have to be at our absolute best on the defensive end of the floor if we wanted a chance to win. Right wing, puts the ball on the floor, spins back the other way, kicks an ash rip, triple penetration on Spencer, cut off, looks for help. Now he can't get anybody on the left wing, gives it up to Calpern on the left sideline, guarded by Samson Johnson, tries to post him up down low, and a steal by Caravan, a dive by Spencer, it's loose. And they pick it up, and now the 30-second timer goes off. And UConn is the number one team in the country. The first time this year, win it 62-48. to Big second half. UConn now extends their winning streak to six in a row. Good to see Donovan Klingon back in uniform. He plays 16 minutes, gets six points. As UConn, in their first try as the number one team this year, wins it. They're now 12 and 3 at home all time as the number one team. I think you look at it like you're um, you're the heavyweight champion that um, you know gets to hold that that ranking belt, that AP belt. You know, it's not going to have a bearing on whether we win the Big East regular season. Uh, the conference tournament, the national championship, whether we get to a Final Four or not. Corner to Caravan, back out front, Newton, long three by Tristan. Bang! He flushed it home! And back to the basket, guarded by Dixon. Gives to Newton, they double Newton. Newton skips it in the near corner to Caravan for three. Caravan buries it! The triple! The rim. Caravan, near corner three, it's Diara. And he buries it! And UConn has answered the call with nine straight points. I think it's something psychologically and in the way you approach things that um, you should you should approach it like you're trying to hold onto it like your life depends on it and uh, someone's going to have to beat us to death to get it out of our um, you know lifeless body. So UConn continues the win streak. They won seven in a row now, 66 to 65. Great rivalry, great crowd, great game.